On 9-11, I remember distinctly driving my, uh, well, how old was he, about three-year-old son to, no, I'm sorry, he wasn't three, he was 18 months old, <laughs> he wasn't mm -hmm. that old. Uh, we had just come back from San Francisco for uh, a trip and drove him to my mother-in-law's house in the Bronx. Uh, heard on the news that there was something going on at the World Trade Center, but it wasn't really clear. Came up to Sarah Lawrence, which I usually did after dropping him off, and uh, then someone said that, you know, uh, a plane has flown into one of the World Trade Center buildings, and I thought at first, oh, a tourist plane had flown in, you know, uh, not, the, uh, the sabotage had not even crossed my mind. So I went upstairs to go to the meeting, the faculty meeting I had, and I remember that everyone was there and they just said, no meeting today. Uh, they had all grasped the seriousness of it. So I got, got in the car, listened to the news, learned that it, indeed a, uh, it was an attack, um, uh, quickly uh, went back, got Ben from my mother-in-law, and went back home and I listened to everything on the radio. That day stood out for me for a lot of reasons. Um, the uh, uh, public radio station, uh, 93.9 NPR, they used to play classical music every day uh, from 9 to 3, and they stopped playing classical music after that because there were no senders. You could not hear any radio uh, after 9-11, uh, or, you know, during 9-11 and in the days afterwards. Um, but, uh, you know, everyone was kind of reeling from the information. It just seemed so unbelievable and so incredibly sad. And I spoke to a lot of people who had stories of, you know, being stranded in Manhattan. Um, Linwood, my husband, he was in Manhattan, but he managed to make it home. In those days, we lived in the Bronx in Riverdale. Um, so we got home and we just watched TV. And my memory immediately after that was just... Um, this non-stop footage of what was actually going on. Bodies falling out of windows. They showed it on TV. It was just so graphic. Um, all of the stuff that was happening down there, people wandering around. It was televised, uh, but there were there were a lot of radio stations that were not on the air. And um, I re the, the last thing I'll just mention about that is that I took, uh, I used to take my son um, not only to my mother-in-law in the Bronx, but also to my mom on Long Island, and I could always see the World Trade Center. Even on far places on Long Island, I could always see the tip and um, the of the towers. And for the longest time, there were just these giant plumes of smoke that would just come up for weeks and weeks and weeks after that. Plumes of smoke in the Bronx, just this horrible, horrible smell um, probably of, you know, burnt bodies and would just come up from um, lower Manhattan. So it was a really difficult time, um, uh, uh, but I just have these very visceral memories of that, uh, of that day and immediately afterwards.